Hi right, guys, here's some experimentation with a 128 by 64 monochrome graphics LCD that I got from SparkFun and you can see the uh, model number on the packet. I've had two of these sitting around for months that I originally got for this steampunk brass GPS with a circular window cut out and a quad helix antenna. Whether or not that project happens, the LCDs are unsuitable because they're 5 volts and this whole device would be 3.3 to 3.6 volts. I'm using the DSPIC 33 FJ64 GP802, that's a mouthful, and I got them as samples from Microchip. You don't get that fancy ESD case anymore, but this cardboard one. And here's one source of electrostatic discharge. At this point people in electronics and radio groups commented on how beautiful my soldering was, but little did they know what was coming. This is the wiring from the hex inverters to the display done and the board completed to start programming. I've wired all the LCD data and control lines straight across port B starting from bit 0 and these PCB mount LEDs are just to indicate that the microcontroller is clocking. The board has two regulators for dual supply, a 3.3 volt regulator for the microcontroller and 5 volt for the LCD and anything else I might add. These hex inverters powered from 5 volts provide level conversion from the microcontroller to the LCD. Some basic software done, I can fill a frame buffer up with characters and a bitmap. I've borrowed the bitmap from microcontrollerproject.com. The character glyphs can be rotated in 8x8 bit chunks. These bitmap graphics are usually pre-translated on a bigger platform uh, in a format to accommodate these displays. I'm writing my driver from scratch and that's not really what I'm planning to do. I want to provide standard monochrome bitmaps to the microcontroller and have it translate to the display. After getting bitmaps working it was time to figure out how to do a dynamic graphics display. So if this is the top left of the display, the first byte you write to the first line of the display is stacked vertically with its bits from 7 to 0, 0 being at the top of the display. From there the following bytes are stored uh, vertically but written horizontally across the display. Now with a frame buffer and addressable pixels working it seems fitting to write a plasma display. With the very same code I've ported to the Sony PlayStation Portable, Canon Digital Camera, iOS for iPhone and iPad, and 16 or 20 by 2 character display. Here's the very first plasma demo I got working for the iPhone. What are you doing? Is this all okay with you? You just stay off there. <laughs> and the hardest part of that whole thing was uh, just changing this integer to a long. Uh, it seems the uh, DS pick integer type is smaller. I had to say goodbye to my cat of 10 years recently and this is my new buddy. I've left the character text demo at startup. I think it makes a good display test. Uh, the bitmap I will get rid of because it's not mine and I want this to be entirely my own. And then next up is the plasma demo. I don't have any buttons or any other input yet so this isn't interactive but you'll notice I do change a parameter of the plasma display on a timer. I'm programming the microcontroller with a PIC kit 2 and my own carrier board. My potentiometer that's supposed to adjust contrast is actually a fixed resistor ladder but it's working okay. And these LEDs are driven by an interrupt service routine which is really all it does on a timer. And just so I can show something else in this video I've implemented the line and circle drawing routines and point rotation. I've gotten rid of the girl picture, uh, plasma goes just for a little while. I think with only one parameter and then we'll have star, well the start of a clock um, interesting effect here because the display lags so it shows that the the real bottleneck of the whole thing is the physical LCD I can actually write to the display a lot faster than this in any case I've called this video part one because I think uh, there's some more fun to be had with this and I think this is really just the start it's a lot easier now I've got a working dynamic frame buffer